Bob Barker, and you're listening to Animal House Radio with Aaron and Dr. Mike. I sit back down. The next thing I know, my dog gets up from the floor, sits in the middle of the room where the open door is to, in the bedroom, and starts growling. And I've never heard my dog growl in my life. And he just looks into nothing and starts growling. I immediately turn on the light, and he's just standing there, sitting there, excuse me, growling in his the back of his neck and with the hair standing up, growling. And it's not a loud growl. It's just... A, light, a very light growl, and I just sat back and and I started putting things into perspective. TV going on and off. Why is my dog doing this? And to this date, he has never done this before, and he's just staring at something. And I, at this point, I started to get a little bit nervous and a little bit, uh, I'd say, kind of scared. And I, yeah, and I, I would be a little unnerved at that point in time yeah. myself. I, I got up and I started making some sounds, and and I sat back down and. My dog, Romeo, he came back over and he lied on the bed beside me. And he lied right on the bed looking out towards the door. The TV didn't go back on and he stopped growling. But he he, he laid right beside me and I, I, I kind of guess maybe in his little way just to maybe felt kind of my energy that I was upset or whatever it was. And to this date, I do not know what happened. But all I know is this, is that three or four years prior to this, there was a story that something, someone else in that room had a different experience and heard voices. And it was, it was dismissed. And the fact that when I was there with the dog, this happened. And this is the only time this has ever happened. This is my only experience that I could say. And to this day, I can't explain it. It's one of those things where I know my dog. You know your four animals and your Sure, pet. of course. And, and the way that, I mean, give me your opinion from, from your experience and the type of person that you are, how these things happen, the energy that goes back and forth, and how maybe animals can be more perceptive to these things than we can. They don't have all the clutter that we have. You know, our animals are, you know, they may be complex creatures on one level, and I believe that, that each one of my dogs has a distinct personality, and, you know, I know that they've got an extensive vocabulary because if I say snack or stick or pizza or cookie, Molly, who is over here <laughs> chewing on her comforter right now, when she heard me say those words, she stopped chewing and looked up at me like, did you yeah. say snack, stick, pizza, yeah. cookie? Dad, feed me. What's up? Yeah, you know, uh, I heard you say those good words. They have an extensive vocabulary, but in other ways, their lives are simple. Yeah. They don't have email and Gmail and XYZ mail and a, a, a landline and a computer and a cell phone and a television with HD and, you know, blah, 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 and a car and all this stuff. It, you know, you love them, you feed them, you let them out, you, you do the normal things that one does for a pet, and that's their life. I believe that out of that level of sensitivity and, and, and well, out of that level of simplicity, that there is a sensitivity that comes hand in hand with that. I'll give you another example. I'm sure you've seen your dog take a toy or something and shake it very, you know, back and forth in their teeth. Mm -hmm. That's not something that a dog should be doing. That harkens back to or leads back to a time for the animals in the wild where they had to hunt their dinner, hunt their prey, shake it until its back or neck broke, and then they'd have their supper. My dogs eat from a can or a bag or a pizza box. <laughs> and my dogs don't have to kill for their food. But that is something that's built into their DNA. It's archetypal. It's in their, it's in their genetic makeup. It's instinctual. They can mm. access that easily and readily. It just comes naturally to them. What have we sublimated within ourselves as humans that our animals do with utter simplicity? What could we access inside of ourselves if we weren't constantly bombarded with new world technology, new millennium technology? What have we, what have we not used for so long that we've forgotten how to access? Chip, I got 20 seconds left on the program. I got to thank you so much, and, I, and I'd love to invite you again to come on the show because I want to continue this conversation. We would love that. Uh, definitely. The way, your website, quickly. Chipcoffee.com. C-H-I-P-C-O-F-F-E-Y.com. Perfect. Chip, I'm going to put you online because I want to, I want to talk to you offline. You'll be listening to Animal House Radio on 1610 AM at www.animalhouseradio.com.